Hey everybody, this is Dr. Michael Shearer. I want to go ahead and pass along this technique video of how I go ahead and I fix my monolithic milled zirconia crowns to my tie bases to turn it into a screw retain crown. And what we're going to be doing that is we're going to be using sandblasting to go ahead and roughen up the internal surface of the zirconia crown as well as the tie base. To best be able to do that, what I've created right now is, is I have my 3D printed model, I have my tie base, which right here, this particular tie base company provides it machined, not sandblasted. There are other, some other tie base companies on the market that pre-sandblast their tie bases, but this particular company does not. I also have my zirconia crown that has been uh, finished, glazed, and uh, completed at my laboratory. What I'm going to do now is, is I first need to go ahead and roughen up the internal surface of both my zirconia crown as well as my tie base. I'm going to be using a micro etcher CD from Zestel Solutions to be able to go ahead and roughen up the tie base as well as the zirconia crown. I've decided to use the 50 micron white aluminum oxide abrasive material sand inside of my micro etcher CD. And what I love about the Micro Etcher CD is, is, is that I can go ahead and take it and very easily place it right here onto my handpiece unit, and now it's ready to go. Placing it off to the side. Before we work with any of our tie bases and sandblasting, it's recommended to place gloves and a mask. So once I have my mask and my glove in place, we're ready to go ahead and proceed with sandblasting of our restorations. Before we do that, let me go ahead and show you everything that I recommend using uh, for cementing the crown to the tie base. I have some cement, which in this case is a resin cement, the primer material that is in combination with that cement, as well as my 3D printed model, my tie base crown. I have a screwdriver, uh, so that way it allows me to go ahead and ensure that my tie base is tight. And I'm verifying that my crown goes in the correct way, and everything there fits. Additionally, I have just a, a little cotton roll, which I'm gonna go ahead and pull out some of the fibers out of the cotton roll. By doing that, it serves as a kind of dual purpose function. When I'm working anytime when I have a tie base or something that I need to cement, I need to go ahead and protect the screw and the surfaces before I go ahead and sandblast. So I went ahead and took a little bit out of that cotton roll, and this is going to protect the, the superior, the top portion where the screw is. To place it into place, I just use like a little waxing instrument. This is like a PKT waxing instrument. And then in addition to that, you could also use a perio probe to be able to go ahead and tamp that down, just depending upon your preference. I also have a series of little brushes, so that way I can brush away my cements or bonding agents. To begin with the sandblasting procedure, we're gonna go ahead and take out our Micro Etcher CD. Our Micro Etcher CD, in combination of using one of these little trays, I can take this right around where my tie base is and just lightly press the button on the rheostat. And you wanna pulse this very, very carefully, kind of moving your hand from side to side. I'm gonna to try to ensure that I don't get any sand on the actual surface that comes in contact with the dental implant. And then maybe one or two just from the surface right in here just to kind of spray down that surface just to kind of get that flat surface of where the tie base meets the uh, dental implant crown. And by pulsing it makes for a very simple operation. And at the same time, I'm going to go ahead and do some light sandblasting to the internal portion of my crown. And this one I can kind of hold the rheostat down a little bit so that way I can ensure that I get sandblasting all the way through. Now, once I've successfully sandblasted that, I'll take an air syringe and just kind of lightly spray to ensure that I don't have any sand in that area. Now, I've sufficiently abraded my tie base. If I wanted to, I could spray it off a little bit more, but for the most part, that looks pretty darn good. I'm looking for a kind of uniform matte finish everywhere around my tie base. And also by having this little kind of cotton in place is gonna ensure that I didn't get any sand inside of there. At this point, what you can do is, is you can rinse this off, steam it, depending upon how you want it to work. So 
So once I've successfully steamed it, I'm gonna go ahead and grab another little piece of cotton and tamp that down into the screw channel of my tie base. Ensuring that I take the crown, placing it back on to the correct orientation. There we go. And I have my margin seating down all the way. So at this point, now my tie base has been sufficiently air braided, my crown has been air braided, and I've steamed everything or washed it off. I'm gonna take some of my primer that's designed for use with this particular cement system. Now I'm gonna place a drop of it into my little container here. And I'm gonna take one of my brushes and just apply it to the under surface of the crown. You don't need in this particular cement system to place any sort of primers on the actual tie base. I'm gonna go ahead and apply a few coats and then let it dry sufficiently. Alternatively, you can take a little air syringe and just lightly air dry it. But I typically like to let this sit into place for about 60 seconds. After 60 seconds, I can just lightly air dry it, making sure that I don't have any sort of residual air or water on my materials. Now I can place my two instruments to the side. I'm ready to go ahead and take out my cement. To cement this properly, what I need to do is go ahead and take a fresh syringe onto my cement, and I'm going to just lightly fill on the inside. And just kind of rolling this around. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take cement and just lightly put some onto the tie base. And this particular system allows me to go ahead and verify where I have a little tiny notch on which side of the crown. So that notch is facing towards the lingual here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that and I kind of wiggle the crown a little bit, seating it down fairly snug until it's locked down all the way. What I like to do is go ahead and take one of my larger brushes and just kind of wipe the edge just against my glove. Wipe the edge just against my glove. Verifying that I don't get too much cement on the actual under surface of my crown. Same thing in here on the lingual. And then the mesial and distal. Verifying that my margins are fully seated. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and take my brush, seat it into the occlusal access, and then change out my little brush as I go further down to ensure that I capture all of the cement. What I also like to do at this point is grab a dental explorer and then to remove that little cotton ball that's down inside of there, just to verify that I've captured all the cement out of there and there's no cement down inside of my actual screw. I'll take another clean brush and I don't push down, but I kind of lightly place down then pull up. So that way it, ver it verifies that I have all the cement out of the channel. I grab my little screwdriver and then just lightly screw it down snug. So that way it's down all the way. And my crown is now fully seated. Alternatively, what you can do at this point is just go ahead and also take a, uh, a curing light and then lightly uh, light cure this to ensure that the set has been all the way down. Once I fully light cure the crown, I'm gonna go ahead and let that sit for approximately two to five minutes, depending upon how long or if the patient's waiting in the chair. Now, once it's been a couple of minutes, my resin material has fully had a chance to set up, I can go ahead and remove my crown and tie base from my model. As I do that, I just kind of wiggle it a little bit, and now they've become one. Taking a look here, and pop that screw out, use my periodontal probe just to kind of place my screw and pop it out. So once I remove my screw, we can see here that we've got a pretty good clean surface. 
What I like to do is also with that cotton roll is just take that cotton roll and just kind of grab my implant tie base surface just to make sure I didn't get any of my cement on that surface. But you can see here I've got a really nice clean bonding between my tie base and my zirconia crown. Taking that now on an off our model, it'd be pretty simple and pretty straightforward. Take that and it's gonna pop on just like that. Here's our finished crown. And also at this point, I'll go ahead and take out my little screw and I like to take my screw and place it into my cotton roll and unscrew it, backing it out with firm pressure against the screw. That way it allows it to be wiped away and you'll see some of that kind of grittiness right on that portion of the cotton roll. Also, I can take my cotton roll and just wipe that top portion of the screw, take that onto my driver, place it back into my crown, tighten it down, and now I have my finished crown ready to be placed into our patient's implant and delivered. Well, this is Dr. Michael Shearer with an instructional video on how to go ahead and utilize a Zestel Solutions uh, Danville Materials Micro Etcher CD with sandblasting to assist us in fabricating a screw retained crown by cementing a zirconia crown to a tie base.